Hey everyone. What's up everybody? Let me see if I'm coming through here. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, let's see here. Looking at some comments before we get started. Are you listening to the feed mic? Yeah, but it's not on yet. It's okay. Oh, okay. Where am I? Oh, there's, there, there's quite a delay, huh? Sounds good. You got me? Yeah. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. So as you guys saw today, we're going to be doing a little bit of what we're going to be talking about inking. I'm going to go over uh, the two types of inks that I use. I need to have these comments up so I can see people. Hi, guys. Actually, let me close this and reopen it. Yeah, so we're going to go over inking. Now, there's a lot to learn and a lot to know when it comes to inking. Um, and we're not going to cover all of it because, well, um, there's a lot to cover. What I'm going to focus on is uh, the stuff that we use in the studio here to make our projects beautiful. And then towards the end, um, we're actually, if you guys were with me last time, uh, let's see here. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Um, if you guys were with us last time for the YouTube live, you'll remember that we had a gift card for 12 by 12 cardstock that nobody won. So we're going to give that away. And also since we're talking about inks, hi everyone. Hi Kay. Where are you guys from? Tell me where you're from. Michigan, Florida, Idaho, Sweden. Hi Marie from Sweden. Anyway, as I was saying, um, we're going to give that away. That's going to come off the board. Uh, and then we also have um, some memento inks that we're going to give away, um, which you can actually see here on my table. These are, well, there's Versa Magic and Memento. We're going to give away the memento inks because those are really the ones I use the most. Um, so anyway, if you want a chance to spin the wheel, you actually have to do hashtag ink on our Facebook. Um, it will not count if you do it on YouTube. Okay, so head over to either the official YouTube page, or sorry, the official Facebook page or the Facebook group. Um, hi, Trina from Puerto Rico. We got people from Ohio. That's where my sister lives. I like to go there to ride the coasters, personally. But anyway, so again, make sure you, you can pop off right now, it's fine if you want. Head over to the official group, which you will need to get an invite or you need to be accepted to be in the group. Or you can go to the official page uh, on Facebook, just do a search for Dreaming Tree and find the post with the photo of this wheel, the one that says hashtag uh, ink, and then comment there. Mike has not picked all the, uh, all the spinners yet. We're going to pick a total of six people to spin this wheel today. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's pop into uh, what we want to discuss today, and that is inking. Okay, So look at me. Look at fancy me. I did a little slideshow and everything. It's not a whole lot, but anyway. Um, so as you can imagine, well, and I actually have a great example of it here. Inking is a pretty vital part of what we do. And I believe that it has a lot to do with how beautiful everything turns out in the end. So let me hop over here real quick and I'll show you. Uh, this is our little bunny, our little bunny girl, or Mrs. East, Mrs. Easter Bunny from our, our current bundle. Uh, this is actually a prototype, and then this is the final version, okay? Now, they both do look really cute, but upon further inspection, if you take a look, there's definitely more going on, and there's a lot more for the eye to look at. Uh, and I'm just more naturally attracted to the one on the right. So, for example here, now I realize that we have a patterned paper here, where here it's just a solid cardstock, but you can see the different tones 
along the edges of just the hat here. And actually, you'll see the same thing pretty much on this entire project. You'll see the little bit of inking here on the side, especially on the tip here. I might have went a little bit heavy. Where here, everything just looks very flat. So when the light hits it, well, this is just pretty dull. But when the light hits this, obviously, you can see all the different shades and tones uh, on whether it be solid cardstock or, um, you know, patterned paper. You can ink both. Uh, but anyway, if we go back to this photo here, you can really see the inking on, uh, I believe, what are those? What, what, what flower is that? Mike, do you remember? I actually have Mike uh, on an iPod looking at me now. I don't remember what flower that is. But anyway, you can see how beautiful the inking is. And I'm actually going to show you um, that technique today. It's very simple. Um, so before we do that, I do want to just talk about the two different types of inks that I use. Whoa. Let me look at these comments here. Okay. I think we're still alive. Yeah. So again, in the industry, there's typically two types of inks. There's dye inks and there's pigment inks. Okay. And I saw a great, um, hold on, let me see if I wrote it down here. I saw a great explanation of the difference. Okay. So a dye based ink is basically, um, let's just, let's say you take water cause it is water based and you put the color into the water and it completely dissolves and becomes one with the water. Oh. Okay, Mike, I can't do that right now, buddy. Mike's trying to call me on FaceTime. I don't know why. Sorry, Mike, I can't get up right now. Um, so the dye-based inks are really just uh, completely dissolved in the water, where your pigment ink, uh, the best uh, explanation I saw for that was like taking water and adding sand to it and shaking it up. Okay. So it's, it's in there, but it's not completely dissolved. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at this little slide that I have here so I can just kind of go over some of the things. So your dye based inks are water based. And one thing you'll notice about dye based inks is that they absorb very well into the paper fibers. So they'll really get in there. Um, they're not fade proof, but they're fade resistant, acid free, stamp friendly, and they don't smear. Um, if you like do like blending or whatnot, I personally have never really gotten into like the whole blending thing. Um, I do want to experiment with it eventually, but I've not done any of that just yet. Okay, so the dye-based inks, we've gone over that, and I've kind of pretty much already told you about pigment inks, but uh, in, in the world of Dewdrop, which is the brand that I use a lot, um, their pigment inks, they call them chalk inks, okay? And they really don't penetrate the paper fibers, okay? Um, they just kind of sit on top. They work really well on dark cardstock, and uh, they, they won't really bleed because it's, again, it's almost, like, it's almost like a sediment in a solution. And it just kind of sits there. You can use it on paper, vellum. Um, even for those of you that do the, like the little shrinky dinks, you can use them on that, that type of plastic. Um, wood and leather dries very fast and is also acid free. So I actually, I might not done with this yet, quite yet, but let me show you because I did a, a little example beforehand here and you can see that yeah I put it up against white so you can really see it so you take a look at these two different inks okay the one on the right the one I'm pointing to right now this is a chalk based ink okay and you can see how it really almost is overwhelming and just kind of takes over whatever you put it on and it literally is exactly how it looks on the ink pad where with the dye-based ink, the dye-based ink is right here. This is the dye-based ink. And that kind of, you know, it, it actually gets sucked into the paper fiber 
it almost, it's almost like a chameleon. It almost kind of like just absorbs into it and almost takes on whatever colors there, but changes it subtly. So for example, um, I've had situations where I've had maybe two, three uh, different shades of green, and I will use the same ink pad and get different results because it's actually you know, being penetrated into the paper fibers. Okay, so those are the two main differences in the inks that I use. Um, and most of the time, I catch myself sticking to dye-based inks because I, I like the look that it gives me. Now occasionally, and this was actually on the little, uh, whatever it's called, PowerPoint, um, if I'm using darker papers and I want the inks to look more pronounced, I will find a chalk ink, okay? Now, Dewdrop, they make, um, they make all sorts of different inks. These are just two of the very many that they make. Um, they also have a, a pearlescent version of the pigment inks, which um, are just kind of shimmery. Um, but yeah, so the chalk inks, they, they, they tend to rub off on my fingers a lot more than the dye-based inks. Okay, so anyway, uh, so now that we've got that out of the way, I, I do want to just kind of show you a few of my techniques. Now, bear in mind, you know, uh, my inking techniques are very specific to paper crafting. Uh, and also, they're very specific to what I like. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can experiment however you want. I, I'm not the end all say all when it comes to inking. Um, but I will show you how I do it, okay? And you know, I've been doing this for uh, going on almost six and a half years now, and I've tried a variety of applicators. Um, I've tried, uh, there's little foam pads, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. I definitely do not ink directly from the ink pad. It never gives me the control or the desired look that I want. Uh, my favorite thing, and supposedly they said they were going to um, discontinue these, but I'm still finding them in the stores. Um, these are the alcohol ink applicator felt pads. Uh, I do have an idea in my brain where one of these days I'm going to go to Joanne and just buy some felt and actually um, just cut it up. Uh, let's see. Lisa says, can you show it with the same color if they have it to see the difference? You know, that's the problem. Um, you can never really find the same color uh, with the chalk and the dye based. And actually, you know what? This is probably the closest you'll get to what I showed you here, these two colors. Maybe there's, let me, let me take a look and see if there's something similar to that in a dye based ink. Um, no, I don't think there is actually. Maybe this one. This one's kind of close. Uh, that is bamboo leaves. That's a dye-based ink. Let me try that next to the the chalk one. But yeah, you can you can see that this almost like the the chalk-based ones. They they really kind of cake on there, and you almost lose some of that paper texture when you do it because it really is just kind of sitting on top. Where with this, I'm still seeing uh, I'm still seeing some texture there. Okay, so yeah, you know what this again. Um, I don't have anything that's exactly like that, unfortunately. It's called Hint of Pesto, and it definitely looks like a nice pesto color. Okay, so a couple things that I wanted to go over. Um, so we talked about the applicator. Uh, the applicator, again, personal preference. Uh, what I really love about the applicator is that when it comes to um, getting the ink into certain spots, like for example here, um, I wouldn't do this normally, but here, let me grab, let me grab a new one here. I've got a nice rosebud color here. The cool thing about this is technically you can shape this ink pad um, however you want. So you could literally kind of curl it like that and really get it into really small spots. Okay, so again, I typically probably wouldn't ink something like that, but there are situations where I do want to get I do want to get some ink into, you know, an area that uh, certain applicators just would not allow. Uh, and I've also tried this with like a Q-tip, and it doesn't just quite doesn't doesn't work quite the same. Okay, so that again I would not do. But 
uh, I'm just trying to illustrate that you can actually, you know, kind of, kind of squeeze this and shape it to fit certain areas that maybe wouldn't be um, as easily accessible. Uh, so another little thing I want to mention is when you buy your dye-based inks uh, and they're brand new and fresh, uh, they, they may come off on your applicator very thick, okay? And to me, I, I personally don't like that unless, of course, the occasion calls for it. Um, I've said this in my videos many times. Um, if you're doing something that's vintage, if you're doing something steampunk, um, if you're doing something Halloween related and you really want to lay down the ink, go for it. You know, so, you know, think about the situation, think about the type of project it is. And if you can get a little crazy with the ink, do it. Uh, for the most part, um, and I've used this metaphor in the past too, I like to ink in a, in a manner where it's almost like, well, this is what I've heard. Not that I wear makeup, but from what I've heard, you know, um, putting makeup on, uh, less is more. You don't really want to see it unless that's the look you're going for. You know, it should be subtle, at least in my opinion. And I think that translates well into the paper craft. So what I'll typically do, let's say I, if I have a brand new ink pad, um, I'll dab it and take a look at the coverage on it. Sometimes, and I'm going to try to illustrate this, um, and you know, I, I do think that this happens more with the chalk-based inks. So let me grab one of these, let me grab this hint of pesto. That one I think is dried out actually. Hold on, let me see if I can find a newer one. Oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> this is a brand new hint of pesto, never even used. Now let me grab a fresh applicator. I hate to waste these, but I just wanna show you and wanna illustrate this. Brand new, out of the box, watch this. Now that is caked. That, there's so much on there. I did push pretty hard, but look at that. That is that's way too much in my opinion. Okay, if you if you want that subtle look, that's way too much. Now, one other thing you can do, um, if you do press down on your ink pad and you get a whole ton of it on your applicator, one thing you can do is decrease the amount of pressure you're applying onto your surface. Okay, because the more pressure you apply, the more ink you're going to get on it. Okay, so this is, this is that ink pad. Uh, this is the applicator that I just put on that brand new one. And I'm going very light, even though it's pretty much caked with ink and you can barely see it. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm really gonna push down real hard. Okay, and you can see, hopefully, let me see here. Yeah, you can really see the difference. Okay, so that's where I started there. It went really light. And then over here, I started to push a lot harder, okay? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, just be very conscious of your applicator and how much ink you have on it. And if you do have a lot, take it easy. Just brush it lightly. On the other hand, uh, and this happens to me a lot, I kind of prefer it actually. Um, at some point, when you're using these ink pads, you're gonna run out of ink or they're not gonna be as saturated with ink, uh, which means that you're gonna really have to push down real hard to get that ink out of there. And the application is gonna take a lot longer because you have less ink, but it still gets the job done. I've stretched these out uh, an incredible amount of time by just really pushing down. Yeah, it does take a little bit longer, but hey, these are not, these are not cheap. So you definitely wanna get everything you can out of them. Um, so anyway, Back to this, um, I really only have one or two methods of applying the ink. Everything that I just discussed is more or less getting the ink on your pad in a way, um, getting it on there in a, on a way where uh, when you're applying it, it comes off the uh, applicator nice and even. So. Essentially what I'm doing here, and this is really kind of a muscle memory sort of thing that you'll just figure out over time, is doing a quick little swipe, uh, just barely, barely hitting that surface and trying to focus on the very edge, okay? And, and there's, there's gonna come a point where you're applying your ink 
and you can tell that, well, you know, I'm doing this a bunch of times in the same area and I'm not getting a lot of color. That's a good indicator that you need to reapply and hit that ink pad a little bit more. Okay. Um, someone asked, how do you store ink pads? I guess in a perfect world, you would keep them, you would keep them in maybe a, um, some sort of a container that keeps the air out. Obviously air will dry these out. Um, I saw a question just now. Someone asked if, um, someone asked if you can add water to kind of rejuvenate them. Um, I would think that that would work to an extent. If you put too much water in there, you're going to dilute it and possibly get your, get your paper super wet. So if you, if you try that, if you, if you, if you've left your ink sitting for a while and they're dried out, you can try it, but I would, uh, I would probably be very careful with the amount that you put in there. And also someone did just mention it. Great little, great little tip there. Um, yeah, so you guys are mentioning it right now. Would it help to store them upside down? Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't store them upside down all the time. Maybe, for example, if you're getting ready to work on a project uh, and you know that you're going to be using a certain ink, maybe flip it upside down uh, the night before or something. I don't know if you want to store them upside down because I, I do think eventually they'll probably leak out uh, into the container. I don't know. I, I don't typically store them upside down for that long. Um, but if I, if I am running out of a certain color and I know that I don't have time to go get another one, I'll flip it upside down, um, just for, uh, you know, just for a few hours or whatnot, just to get that, get that ink to really come to the surface. Um, let me take a look at some comments here, but let me go back to this real quick and you can see, and that's the reason why I cut out two of these. Okay. And again, uh, one other thing, if you're new to this and you've never done it, there's really nothing to be afraid of. Like, don't be intimidated by it. It's a very simple little process and it's very fun and therapeutic. And worst case scenario, I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, well, I'm going to get some inks. I'll get my applicator. I'm going to cut my project out. But what if I, you know, what if I mess it up? Well, if you're not comfortable with your applicator skills, just grab a scrap piece of paper like I did here and just practice, practice, get a feel for it. It becomes a very, it becomes very natural. Um, you know, just like, you know, you guys put makeup on, you guys are good at that. You know, I'm not trying to be like sexist or anything, but, um, you know, obviously most of you have some experience with makeup. So anyway, let me take a look at a few, uh, questions here. And you know what, let me, uh, I'm going to take my mic off for a second. Have you re-inked your ink pads before? Uh, Mardell asked if I did that. Sorry, give me one second here. I'm going to get Mike back on the line. One second here. I'm still here. Just hang tight. Are you back with me, Mike? Okay. Hold on a second. Sorry, y'all. Yeah, Mike, you got to turn that down, though, man. Okay. Uh, so back. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. I store my inks in baggies, then in a rubber-made container. Probably a great thing um, to keep all that, you know, all that air out so that it doesn't dry them out. Uh, let's see. Any suggestions for short arthritic fingers? Oh, boy. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one, Lisa. Where do you buy your ink you're using? Well, actually, Deb, uh, if it's Deb and Jack. Deb and Jack Garden Adventures. That sounds like fun. Um, these inks actually are available at Michael's and Joann's. Um, you can also get them on Amazon if that's your thing. Uh, let's see. Um, Beverly says she stores them upside down and they've never leaked. 
so that's good. Let's see, I saved the felts with the corresponding ink pads and reuse them, okay. Uh, let's see. You can look up tack sponges and saddle soap sponges to get really inexpensive sponges, cool. Okay, so what else here? Um, one other thing, uh, let's see, let me go back here real quick. So you can see on this image here, Hey Mike, if you can, you can start pulling some names because we're gonna be we're gonna be spinning the wheel here shortly. So if you want to start getting that together, you good? Okay. Um, so you can see on this flower here um, how in the center of it there's a, a beautiful darker color that sort of has this gradient effect that comes out to the tips. Okay. So many of you have probably already seen this, but um, again, one way to one way to ink is just to work on the edges, and you can clearly see the difference here. Okay, you can see the difference between these two. Obviously, this 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 looks nice, but this looks great. Okay, and this took just a few seconds. Okay, so one other thing too is occasionally when I'm working on a project that has a ton of like flowers and leaves, whatever it may be. Um, I will actually grab this little guy. And this guy comes in like a pack with, with the actual applicators. Um, it comes with a few less, but this guy's pretty cool. I don't always use them, but when I'm doing a lot and I need a lot of, uh, I need it to cover a lot of real estate and I need to create like a circular motion with it, I'll actually take the, the ink pad, there's a Velcro on this. You just pop the ink pad on there, like so. Okay, and I just cut out a few little petals here. <clears throat> uh, let me grab my purple. There's a nice purple color. Oh, you know what? That's another thing that I was gonna talk about actually, is selecting colors, okay? So uh, I'd say 90% of the time when I'm inking, and I can actually use this as a, a great example here. I'll show you, okay? So this hat right here is purple. The idea is to find a tone that's comparable, but a little bit darker. Okay, so I think this is actually the exact color that I use there. It's a grape jelly. This is, uh, the ears on this bunny are brown. So I took a little bit of a darker brown. Um, this little patterned paper here, this yellow, I hit this with kind of an orange, okay? So think about, think about a color um, outside in the sun that is just kind of getting burnt by the sun a little bit. Like what would that look like if the sun was just hitting it and changing the tips? And you've probably seen this in nature uh, where you see a petal, a, a leaf or something, it's just completely dehydrated and you know, the, the, the tips are starting to dry out a little bit. They, they typically get a little bit darker um, and just, you know, just a little bit darker. So going back to this, um, this, the part of her skirt here, that's a nice turquoise. I took a nice darker turquoise color. Uh, occasionally, now on this white, the white part of the hand, obviously you can't ink white and we wanted to create some sort of contrast so that you can see it. You can see it up against the white here. Uh, there's a little bit of brown, okay? Uh, so there's obviously exceptions to that rule, and that's just something that comes down to either A, personal preference, or B, just logic, okay? Because obviously the bunny is brown already, so why not hit the white parts with a little bit more brown, okay? Um, this pink dress here, we hit that with a darker pink, and so on and so forth, okay? So... That being said, let me show you this other little technique uh, when it comes to inking flower petals. And Mike, if you can, I know I lost you again, uh, but if you can go ahead and start sending me some names because we're wrapping up here and I want, to, um, I want to spin this wheel. Okay, so I've got this applicator. I'll get some ink on there. And this is dye-based. It's, it's not gonna cover it like the, uh, the hint of pesto did. But what I'll typically do is actually rub some of it off 
on some white just to kind of get an idea of the coverage that I can anticipate. Okay, and then I'll start from the center and just start doing like a little circle. And it doesn't seem like much is happening right now, but it is. And this, I, I actually, when I cut this petal out, I made it really big, which I probably shouldn't have done because now it's just going to take a lot more ink to cover it. And I'm just doing little circles. And you can just kind of work up each little petal. And I know it's, you might not be seeing anything just yet, but you will. Actually, you can see it now. Look at that. Okay, so if you put it, that's why I cut two of these out so you can see the difference. Okay, and really not much to it. The main thing I would do is just to make sure that you're not oversaturating your pad when you're doing this, because otherwise it's just gonna it's gonna come out looking crazy. You're not gonna get that that beautiful little gradient sort of look on the petals. Okay. So after watching this, I hope you guys realize that there's really no reason why you can't do this, and I, I can guarantee you it's gonna take and elevate your projects to uh, another level. I know that sounds cliche and I kind of hate saying it. I got to come up with something new, but, and you get some really cool looking patterns coming up here on the, uh, on the background paper there. And you can take this up as far as you want onto the petal and extend that gradient as far as you want. Obviously you don't want to you don't need to bring it all the way up because it kind of defeats the purpose. You might as well just get a darker purple to start with, but you can see the difference there. Okay, so let's put these side by side and you can really see the difference. Now, it may not be coming through as well on camera. We have some decent cameras here, but um, need to upgrade them for sure. I'll train these a little bit and by training them, we're also allowing the light to play with them even more. Okay, you can really see the difference between the two. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Also, uh, there are times where I've used this applicator on leaves like this. Now, you know, two ways of doing this. You can, can either use the old school method that I did where you apply it like this. Again, if there are times where I've got a bunch to do and I know that they're not going to be under a microscope, I will actually just take it and just kind of rub it on like that. And I do really like the circular motion because I can really fine tune the control that I have. That is not working very well. Let me try the pesto. So this is a darker cardstock, okay? And sometimes that is harder to get coverage on, but that's where your, that's where your chalk inks really come in handy. Because again, they kind of sit on top and will be more visible. Okay, this is not the best color to put on this, but I just wanted to show you that your chalk inks are definitely gonna show up better on darker cardstock. Now this color is almost lighter than the color that I'm working on, but you can see that it is showing up. Okay. So let me see here. We'll go back to my face here for a minute and we'll take a look at some comments. Um, inking, inking takes time, but well worth the effort it takes. Sometimes I do more than one color on what I'm inking. Yes, I've actually done that too. Um, I didn't want to get too crazy with the tutorial here because uh, I wanted to introduce people to inking if they haven't done it before and not give you too much to where you're overwhelmed or intimidated because, um, you know, who wants that, especially their first time inking. But yes, I've actually done that. So sometimes there are situations where um, I need it like a specific color, but maybe I don't have that color. Or um, I started inking with one color and I didn't like it. So I just kind of went over it with another color and they, they do sort of blend um, in a way. Um, so yeah, you can do that too. Um, let's see here. Um, Rita says she has to remind herself to ink. I get busy putting a design together then realize I should have inked. <laughs> yeah. 
it's okay. Um, that's so much easier on those smaller things, okay. I noticed there is a different, there is different memento inks. Yeah, we, we kind of went over that a little bit at the beginning of the live. Um, so I'm not going to go over it again. If you missed that part, um, just kind of started at the beginning. Uh, let's see. To save on applicators, I pull mine down over the bottom and turn it around. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you can definitely, what I'll do sometimes, um, because, you know, these applicators, I mean, let's face it, everything is super expensive these days. Um, I typically just put my finger right on the corner, which means that I can flip it around and use the other corner. And you can also flip it upside down and then use that corner and then use that corner. Um, I try to save some of these especially if there's a certain color that I use frequently, just so that I'm not, um, you know, going through them like crazy. Uh, let's see. Beverly says she uses a circular motion. Is that a special ink pad you use to lay your items on to be inked? No, actually, um, it's just a white sheet of cardstock. Um, and I do that. It's nice to have a lighter sheet of cardstock underneath whatever you're inking, especially if you're inking on a table. Um, it also helps you kind of keep a gauge on how much, you know, ink is actually being applied to your color. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, let's see, what colors do you recommend for green paper? Um, you know what, typically, it's a good question. I'll go over that. Uh, let me see here. Mike, are you sending me stuff? There we go. All right, we got some spinners here. We're going to start spinning the wheel here in a moment. Uh, let's see, for greens, these are my go-tos right here. Uh, I, I use Cottage Ivy and Bamboo Leaves are probably my two go-tos. Um, yeah, the Hint of Pesto, I'll use that occasionally, but again, that's a chalk-based, so I don't, I don't really gravitate towards that very often. But, hope you will do more videos on inking within the next few months after we have some practice, for sure. Yeah, I'd love... I would love for you guys to um, actually a lot of a lot of our members in the Dreaming Tree group are already inking, which is wonderful to see. And I, I feel like I've been seeing more and more of it um, as the years have gone on. But uh, hopefully that was educational. And let's see. Let's start. Let's get going here. What are we doing? Let me pull up a let me pull up a spinner. And then if you guys have any other questions, um, feel free to post them in the comments on YouTube here. And what just happened? I hate when this happens. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's, find, let's find someone to spin the wheel. Yeah, Mike, you can start sending more of them. All right, here we go. Let's take a look and see who's going to spin right now. Let me move this out of the way. Here we go. All right. Tammy, Tammy Schlender is going to get a spin on the wheel here. We're going to have a total, what did I say, five or six? I don't remember what I said, but here we go. All right, so up for grabs today, we've got um, on the wheel here, you can see we've got the Memento inks. Uh, it's a 12 pack, which is great. And then from the previous, um, from the previous live stream, nobody won the 12 by 12 gift, uh, 12 by 12 cardstock uh, gift card. So we're going to give that away too. Uh, you still haven't disclosed the secret of how you have a wipe off under your desk. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep that under wraps. Now there's actually a, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to take a picture of it. Uh, what are we doing here? Okay, here we go. Who are we, who's spinning here? Tammy, good luck. Here we go. What do we got, Tammy? Oh, Tammy, right in between the two, of course. All right, Tammy, congrats. You've won 50 points. Please uh, email info at 3dsvg.com or you can use the contact form on our website to claim your prize. Okay, Mike's uh, locking and loading them here. We've got them. Here we go. We're just going to go right into it. And our next, our next lucky contestant is Diana Dean. Diana, your turn. Here we go. 
Good luck. All right, Diana, 100 points. Uh, points are just as good as cash at 3dsvg.com, our website. So congratulations, you won 100 points. Again, please email info at 3dsvg.com or use the contact form on our site to claim your prize. Uh, let's go to the next one. What do we got here? Why is this doing this? Hold on. There we go. No. Okay then, mister. All right, whatever. Uh, Jenny Bear. Jenny, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that, Jenny. You are next up to spin the wheel. Here you go, good luck. Oh, geez. 150 points, Jenny. Congratulations. Uh, claim your prize, info at 3dsvg.com. All right, next up, who's next? We've got Cindy LeBrant Catone, I believe is how you say it. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck, Cindy. Come on, big prize, let's go, right now. Okay. 150 points for Cindy. Cindy, please email info at 3dsvg.com. Okay, so we've got two more people here. Um, if nobody wins either of these today, we're going to roll them into the next live, which we're going to do tomorrow. So anyway, uh, I'm having a blast spinning this wheel. I am actually. All right, next up, who's next? We've got Lana, uh, Lena, Lena Foster. Lena, good luck to you. Here we go. Hope you win something good. <laughs> oh, geez. Lena, 150 points. Um, claim your prize at, by sending an email to info at 3dsvg.com. And that leaves one more winner or one more spinner. Wait, did we already do her? No, I don't think so. Um, actually, hold on. Let me make sure we didn't. Nope. Okay, here we go. Our last spin for the day goes to Kathy Rojas. Kathy, good luck. I'm going to actually move this over here so that we can uh, maybe change the course of it. I really want to give away a big prize today. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> Get a real good spin. Come on, there you go. We got a winner. <laughs> Kathy, congratulations, you've won some inks. Um, so to claim that, um, just visit our website, hit the contact form, or you can email info at 3dsvg.com. Uh, did we finalize the topic for tomorrow? No, we have not actually finalized it. There are some things that I'm gonna go over, but um, if you have suggestions on what you want to see tomorrow, um, please leave a comment here or you can email us, uh, leave a comment on Facebook, whatever you want to do. I'm going to take this off since that one's been claimed. Congratulations. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be doing this around the same time, uh, probably about one o'clock. Uh, so I will see you then. And don't forget to enter for your chance to spin. You need to find the post for the live on Facebook. And there's a hashtag that you need to comment. And we randomly choose. Um, probably going to be up five or six spins tomorrow as well. Um, and we'll announce your name during the live. Spin the wheel. And hopefully you can win a prize. I already told Mike that you know when we when we hit some milestones on youtube as far as subscriber count we've got forty six thousand as of this morning uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already um, when we reach certain milestones uh, we're going to give away bigger prizes and i'm really looking forward to doing that uh, because i know that who doesn't love to spin a wheel i guess is what i'm saying so anyway with that i'm going to sign off here
and I will see you guys at the live tomorrow. Have a good day. Welcome to the magical world of Dreaming Tree. Premium 3D SVG files for your Cricut, Silhouette, Scan and Cut, and other SVG compatible cutting machines. From pop-up cards to boxes, Christmas centerpieces to Halloween frights, our premium content is sure to delight crafters of all ages. Make the most realistic 3D flowers, wedding cakes, handbags, wall decor, Thanksgiving and birthday centerpieces, teacher gifts, and more. Visit our site, 3dsvg.com, and get started today with one of our completely free SVG projects. We've got over 150 to choose from, complete with assembly tutorials and supply lists so you know exactly what color and how many sheets of paper you'll need. We also provide email, text, and phone support in case you need help with anything big or small. Our customer service and products get rave reviews, and we've got the testimonials to prove it. Dreaming Tree is rated five stars on Facebook and Google reviews. Visit 3dsvg.com today. We look forward to crafting with you soon.